You cannot write a single line without a cosmology, a cosmogony laid out before all eyes. There is no part of yourself you can separate out saying, this is memory, this is sensation, this is the work I care about, this is how I make a living. It is whole, it is a whole, it always was whole, you do not make it so. There is nothing to integrate, you are a presence. You are an appendage of the work. The work stems from, hangs from the heaven you create. Every man, every woman carries a firmament inside, and the stars in it are not the stars in the sky. Without imagination, there is no memory. Without imagination, there is no sensation. Without imagination, there is no will, desire. History is a living weapon in your hand, and you have imagined it. It is thus that you find out for yourself. History is the dream of what can be. It is the relation between things in a continuum of imagination. What you find out for yourself is what you select out of an infinite sea of possibility. No one can inhabit your world, yet it is not lonely. The ground of imagination is fearlessness, discourse, is videotape of a movie of a shadow play, but the puppets are in your hand, your counters in a multidimensional chess, which is divination and strategy. The war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. The ultimate famine is the starvation of the imagination. It is death to be sure, and the undead seek to inhabit someone else's world. The ultimate claustrophobia is the syllogism. The ultimate claustrophobia is it all adds up. Nothing adds up, and nothing stands in for anything else. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. There is no way out of the spiritual battle. There is no way you can avoid taking sides. There is no way you can not have a poetics, no matter what you do, plumber, baker, teacher. You do it in the consciousness of making or not making your world. You have a poetics. You step into the world like a suit of ready-made clothes, or you etch in light. Your firmament spills into the shape of your room, the shape of the poem, of your body, your loves. A man's life, a woman's life, is an allegory. Dig it. There is no way out of the spiritual battle. The war is the war against the imagination. You can't sign up as a conscientious objector. The war of the worlds hangs here, right now, in the balance. It is a war for this world, to keep it a veil of soul-making. The taste in all our mouths is the taste of our power, and it is bitter as death. Bring yourself home to yourself. Enter the garden. The guy at the gate with the flaming sword is yourself. The war is the war for the human imagination, and no one can fight it but you, and no one can fight it for you. The imagination is not only holy, it is precise. It is not only fierce, it is practical. Men die every day for the lack of it. It is vast and elegant. Intellectus means light of the mind. It is not discourse. It is not even language. The inner sun, the polis, is constellated around the sun, the fire, is central.